In the tapestry of history, the Carolingian dynasty emerges as a vibrant thread, weaving its way through the tapestry of early Middle Ages in Western and Central Europe. Defined by the noble lineage of the Franks, this dynasty, spanning from 751 to 887, held sway over Francia and its successor kingdoms, reaching expansively into modern Italy, Spain, and Hungary. At its zenith, it birthed the Grand Carolingian Empire, 800 to 887, a colossal political entity unmatched in Europe until the 19th century. The very name Carolingian echoes the resonance of Charles, a nod to figures like Charles Martel, celebrated for staunchly repelling the Moors from Gaul, and Charlemagne, the illustrious King of the Franks, 768 to 814, and Holy Roman Emperor, 800 to 814. Charlemagne's coronation in 800, casting him as Emperor of the Romans, laid the cornerstone for the Holy Roman Empire. Yet, it's worth noting that the term, Holy Roman Empire itself, would not be standardized until the 12th century. The Carolingians, though political juggernauts of their time, grappled incessantly with challenges to their dominion. Despite their pinnacle of power, the dynasty succumbed to the tumult of succession disputes, civil strife, and territorial partitions in the mid-9th century. However, from these fragments arose the political foundations of the Holy Roman Empire, alongside the modern nations of France, Germany, and Italy. The Carolingians' territorial exploits, policies, and interactions with the medieval church played a pivotal role in shaping the contours of what we now recognize as modern Europe. The genesis of the Carolingian dynasty unfolded against the backdrop of the fading Merovingian dynasty, 458 to 751, whose decentralized rule and internal conflicts left the kingdom vulnerable. Descendants of Clovis I, the Merovingians presided over a realm that spanned Burgundy, Gaul, Swabia, and western Switzerland. However, their adoption of partition inheritance laws paved the way for territorial wars, diluting their influence and elevating the mayors of the palace to de facto rulers. As unrest and conflict eroded Merovingian authority, the mayors evolved into political power brokers, relegating the kings to ceremonial roles. Amid this political upheaval, the Carolingian lineage, arising from the union of the Pepinid and Arnulfing houses, gained prominence. Charles Martel, inheriting the title of mayor in Austrasia, emerged as a pivotal figure. His consolidation of Francia under his sole mayoral authority by 718 marked a turning point. After the death of the Merovingian king, Theoderic IV in 737, Charles declined to install a new monarch, effectively ruling over Francia until his death in 741. Charles Martel's influence expanded through subjugating rebellious kingdoms, establishing tributary states, and supporting Christian missions in the East. Renowned for his victory at the Battle of Tours in 732, he successfully halted the Muslim expansion into Francia. Charles's death in 741 ushered in mayoral control to his sons, Papon the Short and Carloman, who later abdicated in 747. To solidify their rule they restored the Merovingian monarchy, using Childric III as a puppet king. In 751, Papon the Short took a decisive step, deposing Childric III and assuming the throne. Crowned by Pope Zachary, he became the first Carolingian king of the Franks, officially ending the Merovingian reign. Pepin's reign marked a period of expansion as he intervened in the Lombard invasion of papal territory in 754, capturing Ravenna and granting it to the Pope. This act, known as the Donation of Pepin, laid the groundwork for the Papal States, fortifying papal claims to secular authority. Charlemagne emerges as a colossus, elevating the Carolingian dynasty to undying renown. Son of Pepin the Short, Charlemagne's legacy is etched in military prowess, an intolerance for paganism, and an unyielding spirit of expansionism. Ascending to the throne as King of the Franks, 768 to 814, and later as Holy Roman Emperor, 800 to 814, he left an indelible mark on Western and Central Europe. From the heart of Austrasia, in the capital at Aachen, Charlemagne, alongside his brother Carloman I, ruled as co-king. Yet, the sibling discord persisted until Carloman's demise in 771, allowing Charlemagne to reign alone with the backing of the Frankish aristocracy and church. Under his visionary leadership, the Frankish kingdom underwent a transformative metamorphosis into a thriving empire, spanning Western and Central Europe through conquests. The Saxon Wars, ignited in 772, marked the onset of Charlemagne's territorial expansion, 
a relentless conquest that subjugated pagan Saxony entirely by 804, the echoes of his triumph resonated further as he defended the papacy against the Lombards in 773, ultimately annexing the Lombard kingdom in 774. Charlemagne's realm, now bearing the titles of King of the Franks and Lombards, witnessed an unprecedented territorial surge. By his passing in 814, the Frankish kingdom had burgeoned, stretching westward to Barcelona, Catalonia, and Brittany, south through Italy to Rome, and eastward to Bavaria, Bohemia, Carinthia, Croatia, and Hungary. Charlemagne, not content with political victories alone, orchestrated the Carolingian Renaissance, a sweeping program of religious and moral reform. Converting conquered populations to Christianity, he standardized church practices and canon, fostered education and literacy among the nobility, and spearheaded the creation of religious and intellectual texts. His alliance with Pope Leo III culminated in a momentous event on December 25, 800, when the Pope crowned Charlemagne as Roman Emperor. Though symbolic, this act laid the foundation for the Carolingian Empire, 800 to 887, and its eventual successor, the Holy Roman Empire. The curtain fell on Charlemagne's reign, passing the imperial mantle to his son, Louis the Pious, in 814. Unlike his warlike father, Louis engaged in conflicts with the Basques, Danes, and Vikings. Yet, he continued Charlemagne's reforms and left an indelible mark on the empire's political structure. In 817, Louis set the stage for succession by anointing his eldest son, Lothar I, as heir and co-emperor, while granting other sons control over subordinate regions. This move, intended to decentralize power, inadvertently fueled rivalries and factions, paving the way for the fragmentation of the Carolingian Empire. The year 843 brought the Treaty of Verdun, a pivotal moment that partitioned the Carolingian realm into three domains, East Francia, Middle Francia, and West Francia, allocated to the sons of Louis the Pious. Lothar I, holding Middle Francia, claimed the imperial title, while East Francia went to Louis the German and West Francia to Charles the Bald. This division marked the beginning of the Carolingian dynasty's decline as internal strife and conflicts with regional nobles eroded their power. The illustrious chapter of Charlemagne's empire was closing, giving way to a new era of challenges and changes. In the vast expanse of East Francia, Louis the German ascended to the throne in 843, grappling with unrest in Saxony and on the kingdom's eastern frontier. While the royal courts thrived in the Rhineland regions, the eastern reaches remained decentralized and susceptible to external influences. Louis faced the Stellinga uprising in Saxony, a rebellion by Saxon peasants aligned with Lothar I, who had promised to restore their rights stripped by Charlemagne during their conversion from paganism to Christianity. Quelling the Saxon revolt and conflicts with the Bohemians and Moravians, Louis the German navigated the challenges of his realm. In 876, Louis the German passed into history, leaving his legacy to be inherited by his three sons, Carloman of Bavaria, Louis III the Younger of Saxony, and Charles the Fat. The stage was set for a new chapter in the Carolingian saga. In the realm of Middle Francia, strife brewed after the demise of Lothar I in 855. The Treaty of Prum further partitioned Middle Francia into the kingdoms of Lotharingia, Italy, and Provence. Louis II of Italy, a descendant of Lothar I, inherited the imperial title, ruling Italy with aristocratic support. Lotharingia fell to Lothar II, and Provence to Charles of Provence. The complex web of inheritance and power struggles unfolded against the backdrop of geopolitical changes. Louis II of Italy, during his reign as emperor, embarked on a protracted campaign against the Emirate of Bari in southern Italy. While successful, the Beneventans rejected his rule in favor of the Byzantine Empire. The Treaty of Mersin in 870 further fragmented Middle Francia, with northern regions passing to neighboring Frankish kingdoms, leaving only Burgundy and Italy to the Lotharingians. Louis II's death without a legitimate heir in 875 marked the end of the Lotharingian line, sparking succession conflicts. In the west, Charles the Bald, the youngest son of Louis the Pious, faced a tumultuous reign. Ruling West Francia and Italy, he grappled with Viking threats and conflicts with his nephew, Papin II, King of Aquitaine. The Treaty of Verdun had granted Papin II the entire Western Kingdom, igniting two decades of intermittent warfare. Charles invaded Italy after the death of Louis II, seizing control from his nephew, Carloman of Bavaria. 
Charles the Bald's demise in 877 led to the return of Italy to Carloman, while his sons, Louis the Stammerer and Carloman II, succeeded him in West Francia. The imperial throne remained vacant until 881, signaling an era of uncertainty and transition for the Carolingian Empire. As the Carolingian kings met their demise between 875 and 880, the once mighty dynasty descended into chaos. Regional nobles across the kingdom seized the opportunity to grasp power, plunging the Carolingians into a turbulent period of transition. The mantle of leadership fell upon Charles the Fat, the last living son of Louis the German, who assumed the titles of Holy Roman Emperor, King of East Francia, Italy, and West Francia. His reign unfolded as a complex tapestry, marked by political maneuvering and military interventions. Charles defended the Papal States against an invasion, earning the imperial crown from Pope John VIII. The death of his nephew Carloman II, in 884, paved the way for Charles the Fat to claim the kingship of West Francia. In a fleeting moment of triumph, Charles briefly reunited the Carolingian Empire in 894. However, challenges to his rule arose, culminating in his deposition in 887. East Francia, seized in a coup by his illegitimate nephew Arnulf of Carinthia, spelled the final collapse of the Carolingian Empire. While the Carolingian line endured in local territories, the glory of their past supremacy remained elusive. The shattered empire splintered once again into distinct realms, East Francia, West Francia, Burgundy, and Italy. Odo of West Francia emerged as the elected king in the west, while Rudolf I of Burgundy claimed his throne. Arnulf aimed to revive the Carolingian Empire but faced numerous challenges. In 891, Guy III of Spoleto became the first non-Carolingian emperor, a title later claimed by Arnulf after defeating Guy III in 896. However, Arnulf's efforts to consolidate power faltered, and his death in 899 left the empire in disarray. Arnulf's son, Louis the Child, inherited East Francia but faced regents and internal strife. With his untimely death, the Eastern Royal Carolingian line also met its end. Conrad I of Germany and later Henry the Fowler of the saxon ottonian dynasty took the reins in the east. In Italy, the struggle for dominance continued. Louis III of Provence, a matrilineal grandson of Emperor Louis II, briefly claimed the titles of King of Italy and Holy Roman Emperor in 900. Berengar repelled him in 905, marking the beginning of an imperial interregnum. Otto I, the son of Henry the Fowler, finally restored order in 962 as Holy Roman Emperor. The partitions of 843, 855, and 887 laid the groundwork for modern European states. West Francia, East Francia, and Italy embarked on distinct developmental paths, solidifying the definitive split between French and German political entities. The revival of the imperial title in 962 under Otto I marked the birth of Germany, while Italy remained contested within the Holy Roman Empire's sphere of influence. The Carolingian legacy, though fragmented, shaped the evolving landscape of medieval Europe.